Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Defender Roundtable. I'm Laura Onyenoho, and I'll be leading today's discussion along with our esteemed panelists, Rashonda Tate, Aswad Walker, and Terrence Harris. Hello, everybody. Hello there. Yo, yo. Hey, hey. Today, we're tackling another important topic, which is Black people taking action against the conservative agenda, Project 2025. This is a grassroots initiative that was started by a young woman. And I'm talking about there's a black uh, agenda that's going around on social media, a conversation that was started by a uh, young, young TikToker. Her name is Anya Holloway. And the project is really focused on black people creating a financially empowered, sustainable community from banks to grocery stores and businesses uh, with a master directory of ensuring that dollars are being pulled within our community, right? So they're likening it to the, the new Black Wall Street, if that makes sense. So within a month since uh, this Black Project 2025 was introduced, um, the project has raised over $86,000 towards its $2 million goal. Crazy. So I want to pose this to you guys. Um, we we already heard about Project 2025, the conservative agenda. What are your thoughts about Black Project 2025? Let's start there. So I guess I'll start. One of the things is that, you know, we always um, react a lot um, in the Black community. We're very reactive. And what I would love to see, I love her initiative on this, is I would love to see us really follow through with it and not come back after Project 2025 has destroyed our lives and then come back and complain about everything that happens. And so I would like to see us move beyond being all talk and no action are reacting. Yeah, and I agree with you, Rashonda. I mean, you know, I think that definitely it's it's, it's nice to see that 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 proactive piece uh, be a part of the agenda. But I also think that you know we have to look at you know what's going on DEI wise with these companies. You know, uh, now you know pulling back on the DEI policies, the, the companies that are supporting Project Twenty Twenty Five and ask ourselves, what are we going to do with them? And what are we going to do about them? Because that's still a major piece of this puzzle. And, you know, and, and it's what, what, you know, what can we do? What, what's, you know, what's our recourse at this point until, you know, until we get to this, to the elections, I mean, again. And I think, you know, it, it come, to me, it comes down to money. And it comes down to making wise decisions about who we're going to spend our money with uh, and, and, and looking at these companies that are, uh, you know, promoting Project 2025, looking at these companies that are that are you know rolling back their DEI policies and, and making a conscious decision to not spend our money with those companies. And I'm looking at it uh, from three different perspectives. Uh, to me, it shows the importance of having a movement and having organization. That kind of speaks to what Rashonda was saying, not reacting. Because if you have a movement or if you have think tanks already in place. You're already planning. This is a, a response to something that folk have been working on. So they've been doing this. Project 2025 is part of a, a mandate for leadership that the Heritage Foundation has been doing since the 1980s. So this is nothing new for them. Um, and so that just kind of reminds us that we need to get, get on the ball. The second thing, though, is the power of social media. Because I don't know if we remember, but the Defender did our own article calling for something similar. Uh, the title was Democrats and Progressives Need a Project 2024 and Beyond, ASAP. And, you know, I, a few people read it, but to me, this speaks to the power of social media and to the immediacy because, you know, her, her thing came out right around the election. Our article was, was posted in, in August and it didn't get that same, that same response. But I am absolutely thrilled that so many Black folk are at least waking up to the idea that we got to be looking out for us by us. Yeah. Why is it important that we do focus on creating our own economic infrastructure to kind of, you know, fight against this project 2025? Why is it the economic part is so important? I know Terrence mentioned we have to be mindful about the uh, the type of businesses that we're investing our money in and and who is support which businesses are supporting the project 2025 so we can kind of veer away from those uh, those institutions but you know why is the economic infrastructure 
the key, you think? Because that's how you speak. You speak to people with your dollars. Um, the black spending, um, you know, we we speak in volume. We can have an impact with our dollars. The, the issue that I, I do see us having is, so we try to buy black and we try to support black businesses. In the black community, we have a tendency when we get a, a bad black business or a bad experience, we have a tendency to throw our hands up and say, see, that's why I don't deal with those black folks. But we will allow, you know, a, a several white businesses to do us wrong without there being an indictment of the entire um, white business community. So we have to do that as well. One, black businesses have to be professional, have to handle their business. And two, we don't have to turn our, we shouldn't turn our backs on, a, on black businesses as a whole when we come across one bad, black, bad black business. We we definitely should not. I mean, we we have to support each other. I mean, and that that's 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 so key. But I mean, but we also have to understand. But to 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 Laura's point about just you know why the economic piece is, is so important. That's because that's what they understand the best. I mean, you know, we can't go sit and you know, I'm doing the sitting on count and the counters and spending our money with them still and things like that. That's in the past, guys. It's time that you know we we need to show them because we are we are economic force. And they need to understand that. And, and the best way to do that is to withhold our money from those organizations. But I will say this, it's going to be tough because I've looked at this list of, of, of companies that, that support, you know, uh, Project 2025 or who are rolling back DEI. You know, it, it's going to take some discipline because we're going to have to, you know, our our diets are going to change. Um, our, you know, hey, some of us, you know, will have to change our sporting teams too because, you know, there, there's, there's a list of them. I mean, and, you know, it's it's a team in New York. It's a couple teams in New Orleans that you might have to look at. You might have to look at a little bit different. And so that's going to be hard. Thank God none of my Cleveland teams have been mentioned yet, though. And to, to, to Terrence's point, it kind of underscores the fact that um, power resides in institutions, not in titles, not in money. Money's critically important, but power resides in institutions. And if you don't control the institution, then you are at its whims and they can open the doors one day and they can close the doors the next. And so whatever we do moving forward, I believe it's got to be towards building our own institutional infrastructure so that the money we have stays in our, in our circles, because as we can see, those institutions are closing their doors just like that. Walmart one minute was talking about diversity and this and that and the other, and now they're throwing it all the way out. And that's just what it's going to be like moving forward. And yeah, and it, oh yeah, continue. Because I mean, hell, when I go when I go into Walmart, all I see are black and brown people for the most part. That's it. That's and, it. And and, and 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 so now you're telling us that you know you're going to roll back your policies that you know and some of your initiatives that you started in wake of the George Floyd killing, and and you're, you're rolling those back. I mean, that's that's just ridiculous. I mean, so why why would we continue to spend our money there? I mean, let's let's go somewhere else. So, you know, let me play devil's advocate a little bit on the on the other side of DEI and Walmart. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a supporter of big business like that, but I try to think of things from a business perspective. And Walmart knows that the person at the top of the country is vindictive, is crazy, can ruin their business. So he, they're doing what Bezos is doing, what Zuckerberg is doing, and going and trying to make nice. Uh, because they know that what Trump will seek revenge and Trump can damage their business. So I think the way that we do is we we have to speak with our dollars because right now they're just trying to they're like, well, we're going to get our money from government contracts and and being in favor with Donald Trump. How do you combat that? Well, I don't want to lose that black dollar because they'll stop coming. Right now, they don't believe that. They believe all they got to do is lower something 50 cents. And we're like, oh, Walmart got some deals. There is no Walmart without black people, just like all of y'all have already said. And so it's going to be on us and we have to be more disciplined and we have to hold each other accountable because if not, we're just going to continue to get played like suckers and fools and fall for the banana and tailpipe or whatever other uh, euphemism you want to throw up in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do, I do want to ask because you, you just took my, my, um, my comment about discipline do we have discipline? Because you're right, Rashonda. Like, when you see that 50 cent discount, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to run to it. Some people are like, man, like you said, Terrence, it's going to be real hard with the list of, of, of um, 
businesses that are on this list and I and, and I'm so I, and I actively buy from these businesses can yeah. be, be disciplined uh to ensure that we are mobilizing and organizing in a in a in a efficient way next year like what are your thoughts on that this this thing ain't gonna be easy guys but I mean but it, it's so important to us in our existence that we have to do something. I mean, we have to be more disciplined. I, I mean, I looked at this list and I just got sick. I mean, I was like, oh my God, but I'm committed where, to- Where can we find this list, man? Go on TikTok. TikTok is a great resource. Uh, I, I found some interesting stuff uh, that, that Newsweek wrote, uh, that NPR wrote, but I mean, but TikTok, they have a wealth of information uh, that's also cons very consistent with what you're reading and seeing with Newsweek and, and, and NPR. So. I would uh, I would definitely, you know, I would look at TikTok. I would look at, you know, pro pro uh, project 20, uh, 2025 companies uh, look at, uh, you know, companies that are rolling back uh, DEI policies. And, and look at Laura's story <laughs> on yeah, the, and, the network. And to our point, yes. Bam. And I also wanted to ask, I know we mentioned a lot of the challenges when it comes to um, when we see something and we get angry and we get riled up, we come up with this idea. They on GoFundMe, they're raising a lot of money for this project. You know, they have all these ideas that they're saying out loud. Is there some sort of strategy around making sure that, you know, we can actually make this into something, you know, because everybody's talking a lot about this project on TikTok too. All these ideas. Oh, we can strategize. We can do this. Like, do we have to like tone it down a little bit? Do we need to have like some type of like, not secret like forum where we can actually really knock out what our strategy is before we put it out in the forefront? How can we maximize and mobilize our power on this social media front so that we're not looking out? Here? We're not looking crazy out here. You just get, we got to have the follow through. We got to have results so that we're not, it's not all talk because that's what's the first thing that's going to turn black folks off. It's like, okay, they're just doing a whole bunch of venting because we, we're, we're good at venting, getting on social media and venting. It is time for action. And then you have to produce results. And I think they're on their way to that because they're establishing a board. They're doing all that. And I think once people see that, more people will buy in. Right now, I think people are just kind of riding the hype of a Black Project 2025, but hype is only going to last us so long. And to Terrence's point about, you know, discipline, there, there's a quote, I think it's by Nick Saban. Um, it says something like, there's the pain of discipline and the pain of regret. Which one do you want? Because if you are willing to take on the pain of discipline, you're not going to have to deal with the, plain, the pain of disappointment later on. We're going to have to go through some pain, but one will lead us to a better day and the other and the other won't. Mm -hmm. um, anything else on top uh, about this topic that you would like to address? Because I do I do see this being something I, I do have hope. We can't sit around and mope um, the, the as far as this conservative agenda. They're not blinking an eye. They're going to do what they want to do. So we are going to have to stand 10 toes and do and, and come up with the same energy. Yeah. Until yes. the midterm and, and until the midterms come around, our best our, our best course of action is, is 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 the economic piece and making sure that people understand. I mean that, that this will get the, this will get attention. This will hopefully bring about change. I mean we we hope that these companies realize the error in their ways and then they pull back on their you know on on on, on these policies or, or you know we return their policies of DEI, uh, you know, uh, push back on this project 2025, which is going to, you know, el eliminate a lot of social, uh, civil, civil policies that we, that this country still needs. So you hope that that'll do it. I also think that I'm a proponent of going a step further. I think at some point as black people, we have to understand that, understand our place in this world economically and what we contribute and maybe look at and look at a, a, at a day of of, of 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 us all staying home, of us not spending any money for a day. That will get this country's attention because it will hurt it. Yeah, and and, and I want to add that you know as as the the resident black tired black woman um, who constantly talked about I'm I'm tired. Black women are still yes we taken a rest, but it's not in our DNA to sit it out. Um, what we would like to see is 
this fight, the Black Project 2025. We would like to see our brothers. We'd like to see the allies that we thought we had, but we'd like to see more allies doing the work. And I guarantee you, Black women will hop right back into the fight um, because we don't want to be the only ones doing the work. So don't let the algorithms um, on, on TikTok and social media get you confused. The majority of the people out there have not given up. We, we have not given up. We're just kind of resting, waiting to see where the fight is going, but we're ready to jump back in the game. And Rashonda, we with y'all. We with y'all. Don't, don't ever believe that we ain't. We with y'all. We in this fight together. And Me and the squad. Fight, and in that fight together, we need to see some pockets of self-determination. We got to remember Walmart didn't just form as Walmart. It started in somebody's um in yeah. somebody's garage. And so we got to have that same kind of patience with each other and with each other's businesses. And, and pockets of self-determination. This group over here teaching black history. This group over here providing daycare. What whatever the service is, we got to start investing in that and providing it for ourselves and let the thing grow. One of the things I do want to add is we really I really want us to to look at in, in supporting of black businesses. What happens is the Amazons come along. As you know, I'm a, I'm a writer, I have books. So um, Amazon has literally run bookstores out of business because right. what do they do? They mark a book down $3. So you can save $3 by buying the book from Amazon versus going to a black business, a black bookstore. So you could shut the, effectively shut down those black bookstores because somebody is like, I wanna save those $3. But consider those $3 an investment. Um, you know, go into the black, support a black business. Yes, you may occasionally have to pay more, but Amazon is not in the book business. Amazon wants to get you there so they can sprinkle that fairy dust and make you go fill your cart up with a whole bunch of other stuff. And so we really either. have to stop trying to save our dollar at the expense of the black community. And I guess that's just how the BP 2025 project has to pitch it to a lot of black folk who are still teetering on the fence about whether they wanna support their dollars to all black things in its totality. So hopefully um, they continue the fight. They're doing a good job so far. They're raising a lot of money. We do, they just gotta keep selling uh, that message that you mentioned Rashonda and hopefully people will get on board. Yeah. Right guys. Um, and that concludes our uh, conversation, but it doesn't end there. If you like what we're talking about, please continue to support the Defender Network and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also all of our social media pages. And then until next time, we'll see you next week.